Working on a traction engine which is similar to a Mini, part 7, there is a problem with the boiler check valve. The soft soldered boiler bush is broken. I make a new one from bronze and solder it in place, but there are other minor problems. I removed the check valve because there was something wrong with it, and as I did so, the front part of the bush fell off. This is down to the part being soft soldered into the boiler. All the joints are soft soldered, which isn't a problem unless they are mechanically damaged. This boiler bush was made from brass, not a very good material for boiler bushes. The inner hole is threaded 3 16 by 40, and the outer hole where the bush fits into the boiler has now been re-drilled 7 seconds of an inch and threaded quarter by 40 by me using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap as shown here. This is not a good combination, a quarter of an inch diameter hole with a 3 16 of an inch diameter hole down the centre of it is not a very strong part, especially if it's made using a piece of brass. What caused this problem in the first place? I noticed a slight air leak from around this area, and the reason for this was that the union nut on the pipe would not tighten fully onto the check valve. It needed shortening. When I made the new bronze boiler bush, I didn't video it. It seemed pointless. It's a very simple part, and I've shown many things like this in lots of other videos. I'm going to soft solder the new boiler bush into the boiler using some of this stuff. It's Frylux paint. It's basically finely ground lead mixed in with the flux, which is why I presume it says zinc chloride on the bottle. A few weeks back I made a video about resurrecting a really old brass traction engine. One of the jobs in one of the episodes was very difficult, so much so that I didn't show it on the video because I did not want any beginners to destroy any vintage models by following my directions. One of you accused me of being condescending, but this is not the case. The job I was doing was far too difficult for a raw beginner to attempt without potentially destroying the part. And if the viewer who was watching the video isn't a beginner, why was he watching a video designed for beginners? Anyway, back to the Frylux paint. A health and safety notice before using things like this Always read the directions first, and do not eat it. Here's my freshly made phosphor bronze bush sat on the bench. Quarter by 40 threads per inch on the outside, and 3 16 by 40 in the middle. I didn't really need to thread the outside part, but I thought to myself that it would be a good idea to make the outer part screw into the boiler shell, so if ever the soft solder failed under heat and pressure, the boiler bush would not blow out of the boiler. Here's a check valve, and by the look of the aluminium washers, I think it is a Stuart check valve. I will, in the fullness of time, be changing these aluminium washers for copper. For some reason, this check valve is not fitted with a ball, so it's a non-check valve. I will fit one in due course. But for the moment, I'm using the check valve to screw the boiler bush into the newly threaded hole in the side of the boiler. Once I'd done that, I held the bush in place using a pair of pliers, then I unscrewed the check valve, leaving the boiler bush in place in the side of the boiler. Then I gave the bush an extra turn to tighten it into the hole. I have to be careful here because there aren't many threads and the threads are quite slack. I need the soft solder to penetrate the threads, so I didn't want to have a really tight boiler bush just threaded in and then tacked to the boiler with soft solder. For the soldering job, I'm using my Proxon Mini Blowtorch. This really is an excellent tool, and if you haven't got one, I suggest you go out and buy one. It's no good using the very small blowtorch that I have for this job. It does not generate enough heat, and it frequently bursts into flames. The Proxon doesn't do that. And here you see it in action, a nice, sharp, pointy flame, and I can aim it just where I need it to be. I'm also adding some multi-core electrical solder just to let me know when the temperature's right because when the temperature's right the solder flows into the joint. I'm cleaning up the newly soldered boiler bush using a paintbrush and some water to remove the excess solder and flux. The trouble is now the joint looks like this. It's a very good joint and I use plenty of heat, not too much and not too little, but the cleanup is going to be a problem. I'd like to spend a few minutes explaining how to clean up boilers to preserve the patination. I'm using some salt in an aerosol cap with some vinegar applied to it, so it's like a paste. And after I'd cleaned up the part of the boiler where I've been soldering, I brushed this onto the boiler and left it for a while. 
The combination of the salt and vinegar actually tarnishes the boiler. I don't want to leave it on for too long. In fact, in this clip for the video, I wiped it off too soon. But I redid the job when the camera wasn't running and left the mixture in place for a much longer time. Then I wiped away the corrosive mixture using a cloth and washed down the part before the next process. As you can see, the area that I've cleaned is far shinier than the rest of the boiler, so I need to try and balance this out, and a good way of doing this, apart from putting some more salt and vinegar on, is just to use the blowtorch and run it over the boiler, just to make this part of the boiler hot, but not hot enough to melt the solder. I was doing a bit of googling about boiler pressure test certificates, and after being led down the garden path many times, I did actually find out that if your boiler is under 3 bar per litre, it doesn't need a test certificate. 3 bar is 45.5113 pounds per square inch. This boiler does not hold 1 litre. Looking at it, I think it holds about 300 mil, and that's when it's filled right to the top. I refitted the check valve with a copper washer and some Loctite 542. After having a good look at the way this traction engine is made, I applied some compressed air up to 50 pounds per square inch, and that's where the safety valve was initially set. I've adjusted the safety valve to blow off at around 20 pounds per square inch. That should be safe enough. This traction engine is no more than a large steam toy because of its construction, the materials used, and the fact that it has soft-soldered major components. What I'm doing here is using a drum sander in my Proxon motor tool to shorten the union nut, which was just far too long. And now when I tighten it, it doesn't bottom out against the bottom of the check valve. Instead, it holds the union cone very tight. I'm giving the union nut a final clean using this brass wire brush. I'm also cleaning up the pipe because there was some soot on it at this point. In the end, the check valve and the pipe and the union nut look okay. The patination will get better once the engine's been running steam. Here's a close look at the original boiler bush made from brass, and as you can see, it's far too weak. This was never a good idea. That is it for this episode. I'm going to finish the video with the engine running in slow motion. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.